you're, you're listening to the Consulting Success Podcast, which feels funny to me because there you are, you're, you know, you're back now from, from Florida, right, in that Adirondacks, uh, the, the mountains. So you were listening to the podcast. What, what was going on in your mind? What did you feel that time? Hey, I need some help with this. Or what did you feel kind of least prepared for that made you reach out and, and ultimately join uh, and, and be a part of the Clarity Coaching Program? Well, you know, um, there was just so much I didn't know. And, you know, by listening, you you do interviews like this and, and I'd listen to them and I'd pick a couple things up from everyone and I'd go, wow, you know, I need to do that. I need to do that. And then, you know, there's the intro. Hey, if you're interested, give us a ring. And, uh, you know, I talked to my wife and I talked to your, your cousin, Sam, right here where I'm sitting. And, uh, and she listened to it when I got off the phone. I said, what do you think? She said, you got to do this. Uh, she's half owner of the consulting firm. And she said, those guys sound great. They're going to take you to the next level. Um, you know, and so um, I just knew that you knew the business. And so the other thing is at NCUA, when we got new executives, we hired coaches for them. And so the, the, the thought of hiring a coach, the idea of it, um, people can look at that like, well, I don't need a coach. Or you can look at that like, well, let me see what that coach can teach me. And so the podcast showed me that, that I could learn. And then, wow, you know, getting on the calls with you and getting on, on with, the, with the group, you know, where we have these dialogues where you have your topics and then we have the opportunity to, to ask questions and we can kind of feed off each other. Um, it, it's, it's like learning on steroids. And, and then also with me being at my foundation, it's, it's, it's not like I'm 10 years in and I have things and systems to undo. I'm starting them all. And so it's just, you know, it's, it was a perfect fit. Right. And what have you seen in your business since, since that point in terms of um, new clients, changes that you've, you've made in, in terms of your approach to pricing in comparison to what you were doing before with your three initial clients? Kind of just walk us through what are some, what are some of the biggest maybe structural changes or marketing changes or just even kind of outcomes and, and results that you've seen uh, to this point? So outcomes and results, I've got, um, so I had three clients, I've added I think I'm on client number 24 since then. Um, I've had, you know, it, the, you have spike, you have spikes. I've had some, some really, really good months. I've had some, some months where uh, there have been a couple clients that have come in, um, but you taught me about, you know, building the pipeline, getting out there as a thought leader. Um, and you said something about, so, um, it's all about what the ideal client is and who is it that you want to work with. And so I focused on that a lot and, and I reined in and, and got more of a rifle approach to what I was offering. And I mean, the first conversation you and I had, you said, how many clients, you know, what is it you're hoping to make and how many clients do you need? Uh, and it was just so logical that it's very uh, appropriate to have a rifle approach to it do what I want because I don't need that many clients to, to, and I can't serve all that many with what I want to do on the retainer side of things. So uh, it, that was, that was a big positive. And um, you know, so uh, CRM, uh, putting a CRM system in place, making, making sure I'm out there um, in front of the potential clients, but you said, um, you know, once you identify that perfect client, they have to know you exist. If they don't know you exist, they're not going to hire you. You know, right, it's like, right. well, it, that was like a lightning bolt. It, it's right. So I got to get out there. And, you know, I, when I had to, when I had used to have to do speeches, I would try and boil complex things down into simple, sh simple, short messages. And that kind of worked real well into doing blogging. I've done a little bit of videos. I need to do that. Um, and then I can take those blogs and I shorten those up into LinkedIn posts and, um, and constantly reminding my ideal clients that I'm here. And, uh, you know, I get a, a couple calls a week where people say, hey, you know, NCUA is coming in or they just left. I didn't like how it went. How can you help me? And then I walk through, you know, some of the successes I've already had. Uh, and, you know, I walk through those, those first few stories with my first few clients. And, uh, you, 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 you know, it, the other thing that's changed is on the front end, you feel like you're selling. You feel like, okay, I got to get this client and that you feel like you're chasing the client. And at this juncture, uh, after having done it so much, it's more like they have, to, they have to catch me. They have to make it onto the list of the small number of clients that I uh, am able 
to work with. Um, and then, you know, as far as you asked about pricing, what's, what's happened with pricing. I've, I've, uh, I've achieved a, 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 a point where I've kind of hit the, the pricing model that I like for my retainer. Uh, early on, you, you know, the first ones you offer up, you're kind of wondering what makes the most sense. Uh, and then you see what has success. Um, and, you know, at some juncture, I might need to look at that. If I, if I have too many clients, uh, I might have to look at, you know, tweaking that a little bit um, because of the supply and demand. So um, right. the, 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 that's a laundry list of some of the things that, that right. uh, 